Hello and welcome to our podcast, Cozy Conversations with the Sister Project. I'm Lauren. And I'm Michelle. And we're so excited you stopped by for a visit. Come on in. Yeah, make yourself at home. We're two Midwestern sisters who love a good old-fashioned conversation and enjoy sharing our life experiences with one another and you. Consider this your one-stop shop for cozy, mindful well-being, along with some entertainment and lots of wheezy laughing. Oh, you bet there'll be a lot of that going around. (laughs) Our goal is to live our coziest life and inspire you to do the same because the truth is, we think it's good for your mind and your body. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now, let's get cozy. Well, hello there and welcome back to Cozy Conversations with the Sister Project. I'm your host, Lauren, being jo- joined by my co-host and sister, Michelle yes. Anderson. Yes, here here to help you when we need words, when we are... Oh my God, my thought, tongue was like tongue swollen tied, this morning. Tongue tied. I'm here. I'm, like, I'm on the ready. <laughs> I'm on the ready. Thank God, because if I was doing this by myself, it'd be a Same. lost cause. I say to people all the time, thank God I have a partner because... thank. God. All of the things that I miss, lack, or can't remember, you come swooping in and it <laughs> vice versa. Ditto. And ditto. You guys, we have a great episode planned for you today. Um, mostly funny. And then Michelle and I debated over Taylor Swift. Yeah, we kind of got so... in a little bit of a sister fight, which doesn't happen. This wasn't a fight, but it was just, it's a, it, was it's a, a debate. it was a debate. It's a good old-fashioned, healthy sister yeah. debate. Yeah. And I kind of... Swifties, <laughs> now you're going to get all mad at me. <laughs> Uh, Not me. <laughs> Team Michelle. Sorry, I don't worship the Team ground Michelle. she walks on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, listen, we've got a couple dates to share with you coming up on Thursday tonight, actually, on Thursday. It's December 14th. Michelle, tell us what the pigs are up to. Pigs are going to be doing a light, little, cozy acoustic set at Ryan's Public Health House. Uh, Yes, so fun. You guys, this is like a stripped down fireside, cozy AF musical holiday experiment. No, experience. (laughs) This is not an experiment. We've done this before. Best of luck tonight. (laughs) Um, There is no mics, no amps, just us. A couple of instruments. Is there, can you order food? Oh, yeah. Can people come and have a bite? Ryan's Public House. Folks say have great food. Um, there will be food, there will be drink, and there will be Christmas carols and songs that only bring joy Fine and merriment. So if you're looking for a little holiday something and you feel like you haven't scratched that itch, head over to Ryan's Public House around 7.30, 8 o'clock and join us for a casual musical Beautiful. affair. Oh, I'm so bummed I can't I make it. Okay, but you guys, I can make this next one. This Sunday on December 17th from 4 to 6, we are having cocoa and we are we are also literally can't wait with Bashboard Candy Company. Lindsay Montgomery, who is the owner and founder of Bashboard Candy Company, she came up Mastermind. with this idea. She wrote us and was, yeah, she was like, would you guys be into like a festive get together and we're like, tell us more. And then when she, I, I, when she mentioned bonfire, I was like, you're for me, it was anything carols. that comes thereafter. For me, it was bonfire. Yeah. I was like, oh, I will love to stand around some fire with my people. So we're going to, we're going to have um, cocoa. We're going to Carol and some of this cocoa might be infused with whatever you want to infuse it with. Um, and then um, like, like, well, like <laughs> well, you know, remember, remember that mom's friend that used to come care uh, sledding, no, sledding with us, sledding with, her, yeah. we thought she thermos, had cocoa in her thermos. Filled. We weren't allowed to drink out of her thermos. I, isn't we weren't. That the truth? We knew and then why. she drove now, us home. Now we know what? Why. That was weird. Oh Lord, God, so weird. Anyways, you guys, link is in the bio for Coco and Caroling. Well, you can oh, pre-order. That's what I was say. Yes. Go ahead. Yep, you can pre-order incredibly designed and curated candy trays and boxes and gifts from from Lindsay at Bashboard Candy Company. Candy Co. And you can pre-order holiday candles from the Sister Project. So do check out the Eventbrite. Um, in the, the link is in the um, in the show notes. And join us. It's going to just be so fun. I've got the worst singing voice. Don't care. Michelle's going to overshadow my voice, and we're all we're going to bring just, some holiday we're bring cheer. It. Spread to some, some joy, local residents. Spread Good some joy. Holiday joy. Okay. Holiday joy. Speaking of spreading holiday joy, you guys listen up here. All I want for Christmas are some podcast reviews. I know so many. I know how many listeners we have because I see the numbers and I know how many reviews we have. We have a lot of of reviews, but not enough. But I know some of you have a busy holiday season. But if you were like, what can I give those two ladies that make me laugh during the day? Mm. You know, we live for you. Teach me things that shit I don't know about. Yeah, you know, I stay up late and researching when their eyes can barely see. What can I give the sister project? Mm-hmm. Listen, this is free, mm-hmm. babe. All you got to do is write something nice That's about it. us in Apple Podcasts. A sentence or two. 
just a sentence mm-hmm. or two, you know, give us a banger of a review and I will come tweak your nipples. Maybe that's the reason why we haven't had any reviews <laughs> lately, because that's what you're offering as a prize in return. And I think that maybe that would be like so such a boundary cross. You would. I'm not even allowed to like poke I your neck. I would be so Walking around doing that. That is like such a violation. Such a violation. But there are some people out there that enjoy Okay, so give you what do you what think J Lo? Do Michelle? you think J Lo is enjoying that? Have you did you see the recent breastplate she's been wearing at some recent no. gala she wore? It's a very interesting. Do look at it's a she's not no one's tweaking. A My doohickey. point is is no one's <laughs> tweaking anything there. Okay, then what are you going to offer our listeners? Well, if they what give I us a review? always offer people what? when I am dry no. hand jobs mouth kisses. I think that people <laughs> would be COVID's over. We're back flu season. To, it's flu season. We're back to our, our old SV. ways. You know, we are a little Italian. So you're going to offer mouth fine. Then we will give, listen, listener, you closed leave us review mouth. and you can tell us, oh, closed. You leave, leave us a review and tell us at the end, what do you, I will, you can accept either A, nipple tweaks, B, closed mouth kisses, or C, none of the above. I'm just grateful for the sister That's project. Easy, easy. All right, you guys, listen up. <laughs> Enjoy this conversation. Leave us a review. It's the easiest thing you can do in the world. And we love yeah. y'all. Stay cozy. I'll tell you what, it felt nice not to get annihilated last night. Yeah, that's a conscious decision that benefits everybody. Yep. Not that you getting inebriated, um, you know, affects the townspeople. It's not like just me. Just me in my morning wake up. Like it's not like you're running around yeah. <laughs> causing, causing mayhem in the town of the chaos <laughs> Yep. There she is again. Let's think, the thing, let's think of the things you like potentially could do. Like, is there, I feel like there's Rise a Santa sleigh in climb. town. Rise Santa Rise sleigh Santa that strictly sleigh. says no. this is for Santa only. This is just for you. For No, it's like this is not a photo prop. Mm. Do not climb the sleigh. Yeah, so they, had, that they, they hung a sign. So that is something well, you could do. Well, automatically, inebriated. if it says no and you're inebriated, you're going towards it. I was watching on TikTok. I don't know how. Sometimes I think things come up in my feed that you, it's because of stuff you're scrolling. Are For you sure. noticing like um, an influx of uh, like police recordings of pull, like pullovers of DUIs of I've young only, people? I saw one the other day that was absolutely heartbreaking and i watched the entire thing what, what, it was about a vet who was in the car who was like on a suicide hotline and the cop the officer came to his passenger window and was just like hey buddy you okay and this guy was like inconsolable and then at the end he had, he asked the officer for a hug Aww. um so that, well that's that, that, those two hopefully that one's very sad now what i saw was a woman who was clearly <laughs> was the opposite clearly the under the influence but she was doing an amazing <laughs> job of pretending like she was just gonna get on her merry way and she was like oh hey officer she, he comes to the thing and she was like it was more like oh hey officer and, <laughs> but and she thought she sounded yeah as cool and she as was like cucumber. i'm just getting my insurance off my phone and i was like she's wasted you know and she was like, she was just like playing it like she was going to give her in- in- insurance and politely head out down the road. And he was like, so ma'am, have you been drinking? And she paused for a second. <laughs> oh, so she was like, this is just a momentary yeah, she's like, Can you pause tell- in my evening. Yeah, she was like, is there any reason I was pulled over? And he's yeah. like, well, it appears as though you've been drinking, have you? And she paused for a second and she said, yes. And he said, how much? And are you ready for her response? <laughs> a bucket. Yes. Of margaritas. <laughs> she drank a bucket of margaritas. He was like, ma'am, you're going to have to get out of the car now. And she's like, oh, oh, why? Why is that? And he's like, well, because a, I, I, I had a pretty good indication. There was some good indication that you were annihilated, but you just said you drank a bucket of margaritas. So I need to test you. What? Like, she, okay, so that's like going what? to like Casa Margarita, downtown LaGrange for a bucket of margarita, then riding Santa's sleigh. Yeah. Um, maybe shopping at Cleo, like drunk Which, shopping by the at way, Clio. Did you know Cleo's moving in LaGrange? No, I just learned this last night. Guys, this just in local LaGrange listeners and this Cleo is, enthusiasts. This is like hot news. This is hot off the press, I think. But I guess Blackberry <laughs> Market, which is my office outside of my home office, um, is expanding into Cleo's and Cleo's. Oh my God, it's going to be huge. Is moving to where the old Anderson bookstore used to be down the way, which is okay. also huge. 
Yeah. And I like this switch up, although I love this. Okay. So Cleo on the corner, that's what it should be called. Well, not anymore. Well, no, it could be called Cleo Cleo on the corner. It's just another corner. It's the other corner. Cleo's got some jazzy outfits, you guys, like spark, like real sparkly sweaters, like denim shirts with like a sparkly pocket yeah. on front. Oh, you know? yeah. A uh, lot of tunic, fringe. kind of V-neck fringe. Mm-hmm. Um, it's worth looking. They've got some fun pieces in there, especially for the holiday season. Since we're talking about clothes and I'm looking at myself in the um, video right now, does you it look, look like, like I'm wearing a shirt, shirt on underneath? You <laughs> look like you have, that's a cute top. Is that yeah. skins? I mean, that's really Mia cute. Told look, me, literally, Mia told me, she goes, I think that this color is better for like black and brown women. And I shouldn't have gotten this color. Well, it's it's true. And I mean, I look like I'm wearing a leotard. You, I'm gonna <laughs> get, you don't actually look like you have nothing on underneath. I'm going to get my ice skates on. on you getting too. my ice skates on. It's actually beautiful, though, that cut. Now, quick question. Is that a crop top or does no, it go it's down a body the belly suit. button? It's a bodysuit. Snaps. Oh. It's a bodysuit thong. Real comfortable. Oh, my recommendation is no full coverage Monkey bucket, butt. no cov- bucket, Monkey bucket on these underneath. This and I'm outfit. looking for, I am looking for buckets of underwear. Like that lady wanted buckets of margaritas. I want buckets of underwear. Yeah, underwear that the bigger the better. When you jump out of a building, <laughs> if you're in need of some sort of a parachute, you just use your panties. Well, there's that. <laughs> And they have to be tight enough that they like grab the crotch and pull up so there's no camel toe because I don't like, and I don't like baggy crotches. You know what? So funny that you bring up the camel toe because I found myself (laughs) in the conversation last night in the bathroom at the Elm at a holiday party. And this woman was talking about how her sister told Mm. her in a public forum that she always has camel toe. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, wait. This one, so I'm was peeing. Her sister or sister-in-law? I'm, <laughs> I'm peeing. I'm not even in the conversation, but I'm listening oh, to it. Oh, you're just over But I'm talking it. to them Beautiful. while I'm Beautiful. taking a pee. And she's mm-hmm. telling this other woman that her sister just told her that she always has camel toe and she was devastated by that bit of information. And I said, well, that's what sisters well, are ha- for. That brutally are, honest, but... shitty comments okay, from time to there's time. A, there's a lot to unpack Let's, here, though, let's unpack. How does this woman not notice that she's got camel toe? What does your mug say? All mama was. All mama wants is a silent night. (laughs) Nice mug. Oh my God. Okay. So how does she not realize A, that she has camel toe? I'm going to do these quick. The other one, sister, why did it take you so long that you had to say you always have camel toe? Like it should be like on the spot, like, oh my God, I see your lips. Yeah. I don't. Um, I, I came into this conversation, so I'm not exactly sure how and when she decided to bring that up. But then here's me. I'm like, you know what? Why don't you just put a little panty liner? And she's like, honey, I've, I've tried everything since that comment. Oh, so, she, oh and, so she is just one of those women that has camel toe. And there is like a little device. It looks like a, not like a cup for men that they wear at sports. It's, it's like a lip like, tucker. Um, it actually reminds me of like a boot, uh, a oh. shoehorn. <laughs> That just props those <laughs> but it like curves up. up. It curves up. And I don't know if it's like hard plastic. That would be uncomfortable. You like put it in your underwear and it helps kind of, you know, thicken the bulge instead of give you two flappy Oh lips. my God. I feel like we should get sponsored by that. That, that well, I don't need. I, well, well, okay, maybe. May, I don't listen, need I'm though. fine. I, you know what? I feel like <laughs> I could use a little freaking button up down there. Well, you know what? Then maybe we should call the Camel, camel Toe, toe Company. Camel Toe Sue. That should be the name of Camel Toe Sue incorporated oh actually we'll just start the company ourselves just add it to our (laughs) list of ideas i knew we'd finally come up with a product (laughs) yeah i don't find myself to struggle too badly with it depends on the pants sometimes there are some yoga pants i don't own those kind of pants i I just will not yeah because there's some yoga pants i wore them one time and i was like good golly i'm telling you good golly yoga pants i remember back in the day when everyone's like lululemon are the best yoga pants, they're non-see-through. And then there was like a, there was a scandal or controversy because there was, they actually were at this point in time see-through. And I think I've shared this before as a yoga teacher, I have seen the buttholes. Well, you know, because you don't, it's not like you're looking, but when people don't, and I, this is another mystery that I will never understand why, how you can wear a thong or no underwear when practicing yoga. What do you wear? Nothing. I have been known to wear nothing. I I don't know. I'm 
no, I, it's a mental block for me. I need something to just hug my nether region. So when I'm split legged, I don't feel like cool air going through my leggings up my crotch. You know what I mean? I don't know. No? I found myself in my older years to just not, not that like my crotch is big enough for air to flow yeah, through. But, but in mean? some of those yoga positions, there could be a bit of a wind tunnel. That's my point. And I mean, queefed in the face before. Well, all that's why I don't tooted. do plow anymore. That one time I did a, a plow. queef release. <laughs> plow was a queefer. Oh my God. I, I could just not stop queefing. I mean, I just pulled my legs up from that position. It was oh, like, wait, a, wait, wait, the best. and I'm like, you know what? That's, and I don't, I have PTSD. I have not done plows since that. And it was a long time ago. I wouldn't, I wouldn't either because your body does become in this funny position. And the thing about that position is when you roll Air out sucker. of it, the queef goes, the queef goes the entire rollout. So if you're rolling fast, it's a I quick, had no, <laughs> I had no con- control. If it's a slow roll, it's, and then you're trying. So you're trying to stop. So it's like, and you're like, fuck. It was like when I was in high school, I was playing soccer and I had a case of the run and farts or the fart and runs. And I was, then you just keep running and you just can't stop <laughs> farting. And I was running out on the sideline. This girl and I were like battling the entire game. I mean, we were really playing hard. It was, I remember this being a very tough competition and I was having fun. Like we were, were you like farting her. Well, I was, <laughs> we were just beating the shit out of each other for the entire game. And then towards the end of the game, I took off and I started farting and she and I both started laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this is your competition. It was my opponent. It was like the other midfielder on the team. I mean, we just fell out That's laughing. I'm like, amazing. I don't, I am so embarrassed, but also. Like, sorry, we're both losing. <laughs> Um, okay, wait, I've got a funny story to share with you. It this isn't funny. I don't it know. It happens to the best of us. What? What's the story? This is not even a funny story, but I came across a huge scandal. Tell me, tell me. Involving Andy Williams. And, and now, okay, people, and, people are probably like, wait, hold no, on. I don't people think everyone like knows yourself, who, maybe. Yeah. Well, you trust me when I tell you, you know who Andy Williams is. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. It's the most wonderful that time. Is, this is Andy Williams. Andy Williams, who I looked at his photo the other day. And he is remarkably um, similarly looking. I don't even know what I just said. He looks a lot there you like. Go. My <laughs> <laughs> there you go. The words. The words. Oh, Sometimes we, he looks like our friend John Graham. Like our friend John Graham is. You know, there are some people out there that have a lot of doppelgangers, and John okay, Graham's right? one of like, them. Am I? <laughs> No one knows who this guy is, but sure, let's talk about it. <laughs> okay, well, he's one of he's 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 one of the best out there. And I looked at this photo of Andy Williams, and I was like, oh, I like gasped. I was like, Oh my god, this looks like a friend of ours. You know, it's just not often that you you see a photo of an old time, and you're like, God, uncanny. Well, this looks like my friend John. <laughs> And then I texted it to a group text and then we found another doppelganger. It's just some of those people out there. There are some people that have multiple identities of their own, you yeah. know, facial recognition. So anyways, Andy William touched by scandal in ex-wife's arrest. Now, oh, sad. This is an article from 2012. You know what? But this is still relevant because it's the holidays. Yeah. And it is, it is relevant. It is. It is relevant. So Andy Williams, I, as I just played, he sings one of the most popular care. I mean, it's the song to enter into the holiday But now this season. dude's been dead for a while. Yeah, man, he's dead. Dead, dead, as, a <laughs> dead as a doorknob. Dead as a doornail. <laughs> or is it doornail? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, Charles Dickens. So let's keep moving on. So just out of nowhere, this article popped up somewhere. Okay. So Williams, who died in 2012, after a long, a long battle with cancer, he, they, I would have been better if you would have said shared. after a long winter's nap, just to make it more like Christmassy. <laughs> no, <laughs> so no. dark. I'm so sorry. No, it's I'm okay. Sorry. No, he's taking a long winter's nap now, but he was married to a dancer named Claudine Longe. I'm sure I just butchered that, but I tried. She shot her new husband ex-Olympic skier, or he was an Olympic skier, Spider Savage. Did he die? She shot him. He's, dude, he's he's also as dead as a door now. They got into a fight. He was a real, like, ladies' man on the mountains. You know, the snow bunnies oh, would, yeah. like, frolic Flocks next to him to down him. the... Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. They would just, uh-huh. like, you know, weave in and out of the blacks. And she got really jealous one night, and she 
says that he was just showing her how to operate the the firearm and it blasted into his abdomen, which always makes me think like, why are we you're even, you never, you, that is like the number you, one rule. You just point it down or straight you never, to the sky. You never point <laughs> it in at, the direction of somebody. at somebody. <laughs> it just seems, seems like that. But, so even though this happened, even though she, and then she claimed he was just trying to show me, I'm not jealous of all of his, you know, ski top love affairs. Um, they, she didn't, I think she spent like 30 days in jail, but the entire time, Andy Williams, Mr. Christmas himself stood by his previous lover. Was he still in love with her? Was that, or were they just good friends I mean, or did, was she lonely just, and he wanted to be know. there to there support her? There wasn't a lot. I, I did. It's interesting that you asked that because I did look into this. I'm like, did they rekindle? They did not. She actually remarried someone else and still lives in Aspen, just blocks away where she, where she murdered wow. her, her late husband. Well, I thought it was very timely that you brought this, this Andy Williams up and the fact that, you know, some people don't, know who he is. I, I guess I did know who, I mean, I've always known about his music. Wait, but yesterday, you, he's like an American, he's an American legend. So I was, I was scrolling through Instagram Homer. and you know, the Holder and his family. I'm a big fan of those guys over there, that husband and wife duo that are always making. Yeah, what is their deal? They are just like, what always, are they? they're, they're vloggers, vlogger. they're vloggers, podcasters, and they are, they put, basically they put out the most timely, relevant content on Instagram, if you are a parent, if you have ADHD, if you are a mom, a dad, like you relate, you relate to them. And so I'm always okay. on their Instagram commenting. But yesterday or a couple of days ago, they posted a Bing Crosby narrates your holiday party. And the funny thing is, is okay. So they do, they do spoofs on. All right. Well, everyone's, they're saying this is Bing Crosby. Well, their Instagram handle blew up because that ain't Bing Crosby. Who is Andy it? Williams. That oh, song Andy is Andy Williams. Williams. So they're not the only ones that maybe oh, were so privy. they mistakenly re- referred to that singer as Bing. Yes. You know, Who's the wife beater? Wife beater. Bing the beater. Right. We, beater, we, beater, Bing. Bing. <laughs> beater Bing. <laughs> beater Bing. Cro- beat her, Bing Crosby. Oh, my God. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. So he, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. You're right. Okay. Maybe so not everyone else. Everybody just no, kind I of just, assumes Bing Crosby is the guy. You know, I, I understand where you're coming from, but being saying something else, what's his famous? White Christmas. Oh, his is White Christmas. Yes. Of course, from the movie. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, there's nothing like a good old scandal <laughs> to, to kick, you know, rock my holiday mood over yeah, here. Right. How's your holiday? How are your holidays going? Um, by the way, they, you know, while well, I came there, they're, they're you know what, Lauren? I'm just going to be honest. Every year I try to just ease into the season. Just the, the reason for the season is just to be calm, have family time. What is time. your reason? You know, it's to, you know, enjoy my closeness and family time and to have traditions. That's my reason for the season. Oh, but it just, mm. it's always, you know, it always just doesn't deliver. And last, yesterday I was just Damn. feeling the, the stress. Oh, script yes. Wrote. Like I was just the lists and the things and it just doesn't matter how you slice it or dice it. There is yeah. always so much to do. No, I don't, I'm with you. I'm a little vomit myself. Like I have like that kind of anxiety where I'm like, I just should just throw up real quick and like purge get it, it out. from my system. It always feels better it's when like, you get it out. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've never done that before, but I feel like I would, I need to, cause you know, we're leaving for the first time without Luna. Mm-hmm. You're actually, that's part of the, the Luna care. And that's stressful. Luna, it is. it is. And whew, 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 whew. I don't even want to talk about it. I'm a little yeah, nervous. that's why I rarely did it. Well, I'm looking forward to trying it yeah. for the first time so we can do yeah. it. Um, okay, I wanted to share something. So Michelle and I, we had an amazing event last week with Cure Leaf. Um, did we, we ever? Yeah, did we ever? It was awesome. So many of our listeners came out. Um, Marla, Beth, Devin, Maggie. Vicky. Carrie, Katie. So, I mean, just Kelly, yeah. oh my God, Nikki, Emily, just so many. Good you job. guys, thank you so much. I don't you even say know Beth? where I Did you say it. Annie? I said okay. Beth. I did not say yep, Annie. Yep. Thank you. And there were more, and then some. Um, Vicky, oh my God, who I met, Loved. who I love. So in any case, there were so many of you ladies, curious, can I, can I, curious. Can I, curious. Can I, curious. Can I, curious. Cur- can I, curious. Oh, yeah, God. We're going to get Whoa, it. The coffee's not God working bless. yet. I, it should be, but in any case, so everyone came out to ask, the, the theme was ask a friend and it was to meet up with Michelle and I, and also, um, Cure Leaf members to ask 
what should I be getting to help with this situation? Whether it's I want to be more social with my cannabis and use it instead of drinking or, um, you know, whatever, menopause symptoms, sleep issues, relaxation, you name it. And it was such a fun event. And I got so many questions, what I love. And so I brought one on the podcast today because this is one of my current faves. Okay, let's hear it. This is a brand. I love their packaging too. This is the Botanist. Um, Love the packaging. It is... That's a really nice one, like the wood top, yeah. the wood lid. So it's the flavors, peach nectarine, but more importantly, this is a five to one gummy. Okay, so here's what we're talking about, you guys. So it's 20 milligrams of CBD and five milligrams of THC. Oh, so it's like hell. really kind of like middle yes. of the road. It's not too high. It's not too low. It's, it's providing you that kiss of cannabis entourage and CBD. Effect. Yeah, the entourage effect of like the CBD and THC coming close together. Um, this is like my favorite one for end of the day. This is my glass of wine. Okay. Minus the calories or the foggy headache at all the next day. This is where it's at. So the botanist, I don't know what other states are. And I do know, obviously, that it's in Illinois, that they're available in Illinois. But I would highly recommend if you see these, get these. And the texture of the gummy. Yeah, what is the, the texture? Because them. the texture makes or break it, makes or breaks so it for me. These are like a little bit, they're more dense. I like they're that. Harder, That's what I like. I like that. I don't like the ones that kind of like dissolve, uh, like when you hold Remember them when they hand. first started producing, like when everything first started to get legalized and stuff, and there were different options that you had. I felt like there were some, they hadn't mastered yet early Michelle, on. I, w- I remember when you were eating like the mango taffy, the 10, like those were 100 milligrams and you would just like take a bite. Yeah. And didn't, just roll your dice. Yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> didn't know. Definitely moved into a smaller dose circumstance. (laughs) (laughs) All right, moving on to lightning round, reading, watching, listening to. You go first. I'll go first. You guys, so many, uh, you know, I always ask for book recommendations from our listeners and our followers on Instagram. And I, the, the overwhelming amount of recommendations that came in for the book, Remarkably, Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt was overwhelming. I mean, so many people, best book of the year, blah, 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 blah. So finally I... I hooked it up on my Spotify audiobook, which is such a gift. If you've got premium, I talked about it a couple of podcasts ago and I started it and it is a it's remarkable hitting. book so it's far. It's hitting for you? It's hitting. There's like grief interlaced, which I don't really read books on that, but I also don't like like funny books. I'm not like a funny, you know, so this was a little bit, this has more of that kind of depth that I yeah. I, I guess I'm into because um, I usually read like true crime and bullshit and like thrillers. Um it's a beautiful story about a relationship between like a 70 year old female janitor at an aquarium. She like mops the floors. She has experienced two losses in her life that she talks about. She's got an old group of friends called the Nitwits because they were a knitting club, club, but they never knit. And so they just became the Nitwits. And she develops a, um, a relationship, like a friendship with a great Pacific octopus, or I forget the exact name, but one of the giant octopuses. And you hear, and both of their- Just um, from like being around there and cleaning and working, like they start to- Yeah, but yes- and the, the the Marcellus, I think, is his he is his name. The octopus they read in his. It's him. He's thinking. is he he's narrating? Like, oh uh-huh, oh my god, parts. I love that. And then to- oh, it, and he's so smart. It's it's they an are incredible smart. book. Cool. Okay, I highly high. If you watched Octopus, my teacher, my ta- my teacher, the octopus, and you were like into that. Yes, I was. This is the book okay. for you. It's wonderful. I'm so glad that you found a book that you really are like, leaning into and getting. You know how I quit. Getting, I've been quitting a lot too. I've been quitting a lot too. Fuck it. And I was like in such a rut that when um, last weekend Mia and I flew to Raleigh, North Carolina for a soccer tournament. So I stopped at like just there just happened to be like a good bookstore where it was like felt in the airport. Yeah, like it felt like a good oh, book my store. favorite. So I picked oh. up um, uh, Philippa Gregory, one of my favorite authors. She's always writing about the Kings, the Bull Ends, all of that stuff. Um, this one's called the Bull End Inheritance. And, you know, I, I'm always a sucker for a good beheading, you know, the King's courts, ladies in waiting. Like, why were we killing Just people by chopping their head? Like, why head. are we chopping And you know what? Off. And they're gone. Who cares? And I've got somebody else jockeying in for the position. It's just a freaking one. What do you mean? Pet jockeying for what You know, position? people just, it's all about getting to get, well, in this case, there's a, there's an inheritance that there's three, three women that are, you're following in this story. So heads are yes. rolling well, to I see mean, who is going to the get. The heads already rolled previously, oh, but you know what? It's just that like dirty king kind of filthy time where folks are just, I'm amazed by the, um, 
the the social climbing, really. Let's be real. That's what it is. And if you're lucky enough to be born into a higher end, you know, like the hierarchy of that situation, God bless. But, you know, if you step out and you make one mistake, you could be a goner. Anyway, it's it's good. It's I'm enjoying it, but I'm enjoying TV much more right now. Okay, so tell me what you're watching. Well, I binged the Bad Surgeon Love Under the Knife series. I think it's a three or four part docu series on Netflix. Um, my friend Marcy reached out and said, "You got to watch this. You're not going to believe your freaking eyes." And <laughs> she was not lying. So basically, this story is about an Italian doctor named Paolo Macchiari. 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 Doctor Paolo Macchiarini. He's a world famous doctor known for his revolutionary stem cell infused windpipe transplants. Well, guess what, folks? These windpipe transplants, nobody was researching them. They weren't being studied on animals. He was putting plastic man-made things into people's throats. How do you do that? They were being tortured to their last breath. God, they were like dying. Okay. They were like suffocating. So let's not, that's just one aspect of the story. And I'm not ruining this for you. You can go in and dive in and you know that this is strange. He's also falling in love with various women along the path. One woman was the mother of her son who died, that died. from a transplant. Another was the journalist that was following him early on that she wanted to tell his story about what a revolutionary doctor he was. And she came to learn that this guy was a goddamn sociopath who was making up the biggest lies in the world about the biggest most prominent people in the world. He's in, it's, he's insane. The story's insane. And he, yeah, cause I saw the, I saw the, the, um, trailer for it and I saw them mention like Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton and his relationships. Oh, yeah. With and them. he's the like, Pope's doctor. It's all a bunch of hocus pocus. <laughs> I love some good old hocus good. pocus. <clears throat> I finished The Crown, the whole series. And as you know, um, this last season focused on the death of Princess Diana. Um, it was so well done. They did not do Dodie Fayette, I think is his name, her lover at the time, any favor. Really? I mean, they really, they just made him seem like, you know, like kind of beholden to his father, Muhammad, who, yeah, I mean, they, they've been pretty accurate. So I don't know how much they veered from the truth. It seems like uh, Dodie's father really wanted him to be with the princess to like up their social standing and, you know, their power within the world. I mean, like global takeover. Because Mohammed was a very like a multi billionaire, <clears throat> but um, in any case, it's really worth if you're interested in this. I mean, what they it's just so well done. The actor who played Prince Charles did such a good job. He was from the show The Affair on HBO. Okay. Um, he was really he did such a good job. And there is one part where you know, like their relationship obviously deteriorated, but after she dies, he goes to the morgue and you hear him like just like weeping at the loss of Princess Diana. And this, of course, they've been divorced and he's moved on to Camilla. But it was just, um, it's just as heartbreaking as you can imagine. But she was just, oh, the actress that played her is so, mm. looks so much like her. She, it was it was like But there were two, di- were like, there two different acts? There are many. All, like well, every season. It was a different one. <clears throat> not every she, season, but yeah, and same with Queen yeah, Elizabeth. I knew as that about aged, the Queen, yeah. you know? Yeah, and even Princess Margaret and King, and, 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 and King yep. Charles, all of them. Um, but um, okay, so I would watch it. It's good. It's over now. So if you're going to do it, do it now. Um, Prince William has been um, crowned the sexiest bald man. Now, hang of on a second. Year. Don't you have to actually be? Com- it looks like he's got some wispies going on. Like he's. Hey, I know, he's, but he's no. Wait, is he bald? bald? No, he is see. not fully I mean, bald. Hey, Michelle, he's bald enough to be no, considered. Bald. That would be Come the on. sexiest. They should no. change the title to the sexiest man with male pattern balding. Okay, the sexiest <laughs> man with a cul-de-sac. All right, that's no because like who's bald? Pitbull, like the rock? Pitbull is bald. Pitbull, Pitbull. <laughs> he is. He has a cue ball for a head. He's bald. You know, Daddy Warbucks. That guy's bald, and he's sexy too. This guy, uh, uh-uh, uh, I don't think that he. I mean, I see what you're saying. He totally is rocking the cul-de-sac, but he's bald, Michelle. <sighs> Not as oh, okay, so. Oh yeah, people got this. Started a really. This is the debate. What are people this saying? Is part of the debate. What are people saying? Well, they're also just saying that he's just not sexy. But you know, there's a photo of him oh, he, when he was he young, mean, a young teenager. He was handsome, young twenty something. <laughs> that sounded bad, guys. I'm sorry. I didn't. I'm going to retract that. When he was uh, just a, you know what? Okay, Mary, let's you know what? what? <laughs> 
Well, cheers to you, Mrs. Robinson. Jesus, he used to be hot. Oh, really? Michelle when? Like, we you know when he was when 15. When he was 15, <laughs> when he was a sexy little boy. Uh oh, call the police. Ew. I'm so sorry. I, that came out wrong. Okay. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Mm-hmm. I also have been watching something else that so many people have written in and tell, told us to watch, which I'm not going to get too into it. I actually want to tell our listeners and you to watch it because the oh, you I'm going to watch it. So just I'm going to watch it. It's it's cult, you guys. You know we love a good cult docu series here. So Love Has Won. It's on Max, and it's about this fucking lady who. And you know, I that's another thing. You don't see a lot of female cult leaders, so it yep. is refreshing. Ah, <laughs> to see finally, somebody a woman flip. in power. <laughs> Wonderful, <laughs> ruining everyone's lives. And is she ever? And is she ever in power? I mean, she goes through yeah. men. Just like, give me a little. Like, just, what? What is? What's the just the premise? She started off like it's interesting. Her mother comes on first, and is like she was such a lovely little girl. Like she was a little mischievous. She was really sweet. She was very dedicated to her <clears throat> and committed to her education. She um, became like the manager of like a small town McDonald's. Like when she was like really young. Like she just had that kind of leadership mentality and ability to have people like and and to lead people with integrity at this moment and then the mom goes and then something switched something happened and they she started this she she is known amongst her followers as mother god okay she is because god who's to say that god's a man i mean god well, that's can fine be a woman. and she she is mother god and michelle the move the show opens up i'm going to spoil this but then i don't know what else happens because i only started it it opens up where the police are coming on with their full circle with their dash their body cam cams, got it and they're like where's we need to see mother and we need to see the child the police come in and they're you know into this like compound and a man's like okay well the child is sleeping it's just it's it's gone away to bed now so and then they go and mother is resting mother needs her rest michelle what what tell me now tell me now (sighs) what the cop goes into the back room where mother is resting what is she like in a web basically mom mom mother is now mummy Mummy has been, mother has been mummified and she's laying in bed, her dead leathery body with like jewels oh and my crystals God. and sheets because that's where people go to worship mother God. How did she die? I don't know she how died? she died. It is, this show is bananas. People wrote in. I highly recommend watching it. In fact, you guys just do us all a favor and please watch it. And we'll talk about it on the next podcast because yeah, I'm watching it. I'm going to watch it this insane. weekend. I'm going to watch it this weekend. I can't, the thought of being near a dead body, well, and this, I get so do gaggy. Do they hand clothespins out when everybody walks in? I don't <clears> know, <throat> but I'll tell you what. Ew, I'm going to throw up. I'll tell you what. Um, What was I going to say? About Mother Gal. <laughs> <laughs> that never happens to you. I'll tell you what. Uh, well, because my, my brain went somewhere, and then I was going to tell you talking about a lady about draped Mother in jewels God. being worshipped and folks coming in to visit her. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Thank you. If, you ever, if you've ever seen um, Silence of the Lambs, when she goes to see like the body, a dead body for the first time, and they have her put... Carmex under her nose, or they put so you something. I always thought it was Carmex because mm. it's so smelly. And just the thought of like having to like put that under your nose to see a dead body, but people are coming in just freewheeling and you know, like raw dog in a visit with mother dog with no like maybe Carmex or tampon shoved up their nose makes me want to. Yeah, run. that's sick. That's sick. All right. Well, you know it's what? So gross. I'm going to watch it. I have to say, what you've just shared with me makes me kind of not want to watch it just a little no, bit. No, you have <laughs> but to. But I'm going to. <clears throat> just wait. I'm going to. It is so good. Okay, you guys. So we are <clears throat> at that point of the year where we have the Oxford Dictionary's release oh, yes. of the word. Topic of, of conversation the around here. Year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody, everyone. A lot of people sent this in because they know that they want us to share on Cozy Convos that. This year, Oxford. Give me some. I need some drum roll, please. I hate it. The mom from Christmas Vacation. That's on the with her martini. She's like. This year's Oxford 2023 Word of the Year is Riz. Yes, which I'm mistaken with Rizzo from Greece. No, has nothing to do with Rizzo. 
Yeah. And it's spelled, well, I think it kind of like, it kind of makes sense to me if I think like Riz had like some style. Well, Riz some, had like, some Riz, but it comes from, that's the, what I'm saying. It's the, comes from the yes. root word charisma. Which is? Charisma. Charisma. Yeah. I like it. I kind of. Did I you know it, that and, one? And I, yeah. Okay. That that charisma. Yeah. Like Riz. Yeah. Um, Riz means style, like as imagine like charisma, style, charm, attractiveness, or the ability to attract a romantic and or sexual partner. So it's um, shortened from charisma, as Michelle said, and it beat out a slew of other words, including <clears throat> Swifty. You know, I'm going to be honest about something. <clears throat> I am, I think it's because there's so much happening in our world that I'm over two people in the news right now. I'm going to just say it. I know I might get canceled. I'm going to get hollered at. Write me in, you guys. I'm over Adriana Maddox or whatever her name is from Vanderpump Rules. Like, I get it. Your boyfriend I was, cheated I on was you, bored and it of her. sucks. But I'm, I'm just over it. I'm just trying to figure out what good she's putting out into the world and why everyone cares. Well, she, I mean, she's. I think she is putting out good. She's, you she's know, putting she's, out sandwiches she, and cocktails. She's doing her thing, and she's like, you know, like you know, what, fuck that guy. I'm yeah. gonna go become some whatever, whatever. But and also Taylor Swift. Like, I mean, she farts, and it's headline news. You know, and what? I'm just kind of like. I'm just ready to see exposure of other things. No, I'm I'm here for it. I like her, and I like I like what. I'm not she, saying I, I don't like her. I but you know what you you don't need to you need to you don't need to erase her off the planet because you've seen no it's not saying, her fault. My it's saying not it canceled. It's not her fault that she's amazing. You know she can't help it. No, it is her fault. By the way, that's actually you're wrong. She is amazing, and that's I mean she, she just that's who she is. Celebrate that. I'm talking about the media, and I think it's it comes after fault. watching The Crown. It is. I think it comes after watching The Crown and how much attention we put on people's life, private life, and their inability to just go literally take a stroll because all cameras are on them. I think that it's just one of those, there's just, there. I don't know, there's other stories out there that can be highlighted and amped up and 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 put a light on and I just feel like we but you know I'm also here for elevating a very strong thank you um, I'm glad that I'm glad woman. that you are because sometimes I feel well, like, why wouldn't Michelle why wouldn't well, I because be? sometimes like I would not well be sometimes I feel like you hate on well. Taylor Swift and she should not be hated on um I, I don't I don't think I hate on her I think I disagree with the amount of attention she gets when, like I said, there are so many other things happening in this world that also should be as at least as high as her headlines. For instance, yeah. when her and her boyfriend hold hold hands or he opens a door for her, that should just be every day just, you know. I mean, stuff. it's pretty dumb that the <clears throat> paparazzi and the pop culture, like, obsession just follows people around to do that stuff i agree but that's, that's kind the of my world point. we live in and she's mega and i just i don't know i'm here for not it. to be confused with mega uh, no 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 <laughs> and i just like you know and also for um travis you know i'm just here to say that he smiles with his eyes and he is of age and what does that mean what, he is handsome he's, he's handsome he is he's cute handsome. he is cute I don't um, like his yeah, style I I just, so much. I don't love his. He's got style. an interesting style, doesn't he? he I, what what's you know what you know what I think? I think he has riz. Jeez. Actually, I think he has <laughs> a <laughs> whole lot of riz. <laughs> he does have riz. Okay, so we'll go back to riz then. So riz has got. So like I said, it outbeats Swifty. Um, secretly excited about that. And <laughs> we know situationship, <laughs> Wait, which is a romantic. That one's that's a, that word makes me laugh. Situationship. I have never even heard of it. Romantic or sexual relationship that's not established or formal. So it's basically like it's like um, you're just have you're like doing it's complicated. it. Oh, 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 it's, oh, it's complicated, okay. I think. So Riz, are the kids in the household oh, yeah. using Riz? I've heard them refer to their friends who have Riz, but mostly more referred to boys, I feel like. Um, I've heard Will say that, you know, his so-and-so, he's got Riz. He's got Riz. He's got, and he's mean, like, that's like just legit. I think it, it means like out. the ladies it's, like him. The ladies yeah. like him. I have heard of this yeah. before. All right. Well, there you go, you guys. I wonder what next year. So let me see what else. Is. Oh, the other word that they brought up was D, which I love. What is it? And I would have loved for this. And I think this is my whole problem. I would have loved for this to be the word of the what? year, de-influencing. De-influencing. De and if it's all over TikTok right now, and I'm seeing people influence de-influencing. And it's 
regular people being like, listen, and it's, it's what you and I've talked about. You don't have to go fucking buy everything that someone hangs in front of the camera. No, I, it's a problem. You don't have to compare yourself to the people who are only showing you their highlight reel. You know, they are trying to unpack this whole idea of so many of us are living lives based on what other people are doing, consuming, how they're acting. And I think that it's, I'm hoping de-influencing will maybe make it to the top spot next year. It's just, you know what? It's it's super important. It is super important, but the word just seems kind of awkward and weird. De-influencing. Like I like Riz, you know, that like has like a cool sound to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I am here for the meaning. I'm here for for putting that on the front runner. Yes, for sure. Michelle, yes. do you, me too. Do you sleep with your window open? Um, Even a touch? Yeah, I do, but not all the time. You know, when the temperature is right, I do. Like if the air is on in the house on a hot summer day, no. But, you know, when we are, we're talking about during the fall, early fall season. Oh, I'm talking up straight up during fall winter. Yeah, when, when like today, tonight in Chicago, it's very mild right now in, in, this, the, in Illinois. This would be a good window opening sleep time. Dang. Why do you ask? Even though like, because I have a, um, I have a article here by Reader's Digest. Oh. Should you leave the window open during the winter? And they talk about how like during the winter time, it's all about like making those cozy soups. You start like, you do things a little differently than you do at other times of the year. And as we know, and there are a lot of benefits to this fresh kind of cold winter air flowing through your home, in fact. Um, And I'm sure, you know, they're going to have like a disclaimer here that says like, don't leave it open at certain temps. But here are the things that can happen if you do decide to crack it open. Improved air quality. Um, So opening window can reduce indoor air pollutants like carbon dioxide, vapors from cleaning products, and cooking fuel byproducts. Oh, didn't know that. Humidity control. Dry winter air can do a number on your skin and lungs. Fresh air can help regulate indoor humidity levels, preventing excessive dryness, oh. odor removal. We all know <clears> that. You name we it. We all know that. And Crack mental well being. This is my favorite one. Darkness at 5 p.m. can be kind of depressing, but opening a window may help. Some people find uh, fresh air invigorating and it can help improve your mood and overall sense mm. of well being. I love that. But it is also bringing me back to Zena, mom's caregiver. I remember I was lighting a candle in her house and and she was like, Michelle, what are you doing? And I was like, well, I'm just lighting a candle. I want to like freshen it up in here. And she said, if you want fresh air, open the window. It's true. It's so true. You know, Zena thought I was a witch because I gave her sage one day. Well, it takes one to to burn. Well, exactly. A, B, A. But then she also thought it was weird that I gave her that. And I just wanted to end this uh, this little little episode with, well, no, what I was going to share was that everyone that has a tree up in their home is practicing pagan uh, Christmas rituals, just so we're all on the same (laughs) page. I saw an Instagram the other day and I was actually like thinking about it. I'm like, what the fuck is the star? I mean, maybe people think, I mean, I guess the star can be like the yeah, North symbol of the star. North star, maybe. So it's kind of but a also, combo. also it's the sign of the pentagram of the elements. Well, there you go. There you go. And also why we dry oranges, like dried oranges. I shared this with you the, the other day is a Yule celebration or a Yule way to celebrate the sun that will be coming up after our long winter indoors. Hmm. Hmm. And then pine, of course, is to symbolize um, like longevity in life because it survives the winter. So it brings some of the outdoor elements into our indoor home. Offers a little bit of hope. Y'all are witches, bitches. you all are witches. you all are. That's Michelle. You're so crafty. I am. <clears throat> I am. Michelle, as we wrap things up, what are you doing for any of your cozy, mindful well-being? Well, was, are you just off the no, rails? No, no. I was just talking about this Um with this fall, this falls under my well being category. And I've talked about this a little bit. I've been doing it for a few weeks now. I've been going and doing strength, like a strength oh, class right. with um, my friend and uh, like longtime friend, Megan Jackson, is I call her coach. I walk up to her <laughs> garage and she has a home gym and she works out a program for us. And we do like a full circuit, high intensity interval training mixed with a full body strength thing because my goal in 2024 is to. Um, get strong. Be an iron woman. Yeah, just be strong. But I was talking about it last night um, that I'm really, really enjoying it. It just, I, I'm seeing the results. I'm feeling the results. So like under that whole, it's not so cozy going in there and pumping iron, you know, it's not, um, but it is, but, the but, effects it, are. but it falls, but it falls under that well-being umbrella. 
Listen, it doesn't have to be warped and warm. <laughs> Sorry. Wrapped in a warm blanket. No. Okay, my that's good, Michelle. I'm glad you're doing that. Uh, my friend, Matt Friesel, read um, Outlive. It's a book about longevity. And one of the biggest things that they highlight for women's longevity and all-around health is yes. strength. They have to stay, we have to stay physically strong because as we old, as we age and get older, shit becomes, starts to deteriorate. Yes, fragility. And we need our strength to, yep, because if you fall, you're, you're fucking falling and it could be a goner. No. Um, so keep that up. My cozy mental well-being is de- definitely different than yours right now. Mine is really getting into the season with the holiday season with Luna. And I mean, we have Christmas oh, carols on so all day fun. long. Anthony... Anthony's Mr. Christmas. He has, and he would like, like kind of like like, Christmas carols like a year ago. Now it is all Andy Williams. We've got, you know, Seth MacFarlane's new album playing Charlie Brown on crack around the, 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 the whole hours of the day. So yeah, we're really enjoying it. And she's starting to like, you know, look at the lights and like tweak out. So fun. It's so Christmas is magical with a little kid. It is, and it's really good for the adult soul as well. It it really kind of, you know, evens you out. Um, okay, you guys, great, great, great. We've got like one more week till um, maybe a week and a half until the big day. Oh, my God. Christmas Wait, day for those who are celebrating. A week and a half? No. Oh, yeah, till when this comes out. Oh, my God. I just yeah, stroked don't out. Worry. I just, I just scared the out. shit I out of Michelle. Out. <sighs> <sighs> and as always, you always listen up. Take good care of yourselves. I know the season is insane. If you're invited to something you don't want to don't go to, go. say no. Don't go. Don't go. It's not worth it, right, Michelle? Just don't just go. Don't. Um, and you know what? Take good care of yourselves. Take time for yourself. Get outside. And as always, stay cozy. Thank you for joining us for today's cozy conversation. For more of the Sister Project, check us out on Instagram at, at the Sister Proj and our website, www.thesisterprojectblog.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast and maybe even drop us a review. Until next time, stay cozy.